Today we're going to take a look at three different of ratios, uh, the current ratio, return on sales ratio, and debt to equity ratio. These are three of the many ratios that are used to ultimately find uh, the health of the business, how well they're doing, how poor they're doing, and where they can improve. The purposes of the ratios, uh, the current ratio shows the relationship between current assets and current liabilities. The purpose of the current ratio shows us how well are we able to pay our short-term liabilities. Do we have enough are we, Do we have enough cash? Uh, how liquid is it? Now, the current ratio will be, is a little different than a ratio we'll see in the later time, which is called the quick ratio. Current ratio includes inventory, uh, whereas quick ratio does not include inventory. Next is our debt to equity ratio we'll talk about. And our debt to equity ratio is a relationship between liabilities and owner's equity. How heavily weighted in debt are, are our assets um, for this company? Return on sales is our next one. That's the relationship between net income and sales. In other words, what money do we have left over to cover other costs and towards net income? So let's go through a couple little situations and see how we can figure them out and how we can find them useful. In this case, we're talking about Brady's Brothers. They're a partnership. They have total assets of $350,000 and $100,000 of owner's equity. What's the debt to equity ratio for Brady's Brothers? Well, we know that the debt to equity ratio, the equation is liabilities divided by owner's equity equals debt to equity ratio. In this case, we know our assets and we know our owner's equity. We don't know the liability. So since we don't know the liability, we have to just go back to our accounting equation. We know that assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. However, we don't know the liabilities, but we do know the assets. So we can take those and subtract them from our owner's equity, and that will get our liabilities. In this case, our liabilities is going to be 250000 because we're going to take 350000 of assets, as stated above, less the $100,000 of owner's equity, as stated above, and that gets us our liabilities. So then now we know liabilities is 250000 We're going to take that and divide that by our owner's equity of 100000 and we will get a 2.5. So what does it mean? Brady Brothers has $2.50 of debt for every $1 of shareholder's equity. What is good? Well, lower is better. Less than one is ideal. Uh, you're going to see companies that are going to have higher ones. It all depends on the industry. Uh, it depends on the the time of year for the business. It, there's a lot of different variables. I would definitely not use this as the only uh, measurement, but definitely take a look at uh, look at that compared to competitors, compared to the type of industry, etc. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about the current ratio. Um, before we can go to the current ratio, we need to understand a couple things. We need to basically understand the differences between assets and liabilities. So in this case, uh, let's take a look at these uh, seven examples here, and we'll see. So Brady Brothers owns their attorney a hundred and hundred thousand. One sorry, one thousand legal fees. That's a liability. Uh, Brady Brothers owes the bank one hundred thirty thousand due in four years. That's a liability. Brady Brothers owns office equipment costing fifty thousand dollars. That's an asset. Brady Brothers owns inventory costing two hundred thousand. That's an asset. Brady Brothers customers owe it seventy five thousand dollars. That's an asset called accounts receivable. Brady Brothers owes its suppliers. That's a liability. Accounts payable. Uh, Brady Brothers checking account has a balance of twenty five thousand, and that is an asset. Why do we go through and determine the differences between asset and liabilities? Well, in order to figure out the current ratio, you have to figure out current assets divided by current liabilities. We'll give us our current ratio. Now, the thing that you need to realize is current assets are items that are going to be turned to cash within one year. So if you go out and look above and take a look at our assets that we have listed up there, we have four of them, you'll notice that there are three of them, the ones that just turned green, are actually current assets. They will be turned to cash or used uh, within one year. Um, if you take a look at the number C, they own the office equipment costing 50000 That is not going to be turned to cash or used used in in one year so therefore we're not going to deal with that one because that is a long-term asset and we'll use that in a different ratio coming up next is our current liabilities that's the ones that we're gonna pay within one year so if you take a look at our three liabilities two of them are going to be paid the ones that just turned blue Brady their attorney fees and their suppliers 
We're then so then our O is the bank due in four years, and there's the key there, due in four years. We're not going to be using that one because that is not current. So how do we figure out the current ratio? We take our current assets divided by our current liabilities to get us our current ratio. In this case, we add our current assets together. We add the two hundred thousand, the seventy-five thousand, and the twenty-five thousand, uh, and then we'll divide that by the current liabilities of a one thousand and one hundred twenty thousand to get a current ratio of two two point four eight. Well, our 2.48 ratio, what does that mean? Well, Brady Brothers has $2.48 of current assets for every $1 of current liabilities. That's really good. Uh, they're able to pay their short-term obligations. They have enough assets to be able to turn to cash to pay their short-term obligations. You'll see that that number will drop uh, significantly depending on the industry when we get to the quick ratio, but that's a really good start for them that their current assets, that they do have some cash to pay their short-term obligation. Well, what is good? Uh, 1.0 is Better, uh, one point or better, higher is better. Obviously, the more you have, the more assets you have to pay your uh, your short term liabilities. So, and it does. And once again, it all depends on the liability. If you're a company that is based on like a uh, on, on sales, you're going to have a lower one. I think like McDonald's, uh, they're based a lot on on the sales because that's how they're going to pay off their liabilities. Uh, Apple's going to have probably a little bit of a higher one because they're not as heavily dependent on sales and turning inventory over as, let's say, McDonald's is. So let's continue on and go to our last one. And we want to calculate the return on sales for the ratio, for the return on sales ratio for Brady Brothers. Um, we want to class, first we want to classify the following as revenue expense, assuming the accrual basis. Now remember the difference between accrual and cash is accrual is when the transaction happened, cash is when cash is received or sent out. So, uh, Brady Brothers sells products to customers who pay 50000 in cash, that's revenue. Brady Brothers sells products on credit to customers. That's revenue. The cost of products sold in items A and B was sixty-two fifty. That's an expense. Brady Brothers employees earned were, were earned and were paid twenty. 20000 I'm missing a zero there. That's an expense. Brady Brothers received a telephone bill in the amount of 500 That's an expense. And Brady Brothers received an invoice from their advertising company for $2,500. That is also an expense. So well, let's go and let's calculate that return on sales ratio for them. Uh, our return on sales ratio, if, if you remember, is basically net income divided by total revenue. Well, how do you get to net income? Net income is revenue less expenses. So we're going to take our revenue. In this case, these are our green ones, A and B. So our 50 plus 75 will give us 125000 in revenue. And we're going to subtract that from our expenses. And our expenses are 6250 20500 and 2500 to get us to the 8550 so our revenue less our expenses gives us a net income of 39.5. Our return on sales ratio then is we're going to take that 39.5 and we're going to divide that by our revenue, which is 125,000, which give us a 31.6. That's awesome. Because so what does that mean? Well, Brady Brothers generated 31.6 return profit per dollar of sales, or 32 cents of every sales dollar is profit. So that can go towards net income um, and whatnot. So they're doing very well. What is good? Well, higher is better. Obviously, that's the goal of all for that's that's the higher is better, and that's the goal of all firms. However, uh, you it all depends on industry as well. Low return could in indicate poor selling prices or relatively high expenses. So you want to definitely uh, pay attention to that. So there's those three ratios. Uh, hope they help.